Welcome back. So the title of this mini lecture is Native American Wars, and we are going to talk a little bit about the U.S. military and their actions against Native Americans in the aftermath of the American Civil War. Now, this is a sensitive topic, and there's a lot to it. There's a lot of complexity here. So we're just going to kind of highlight five things that you should be thinking about when it comes to our understanding of the conflicts that occurred here. The first is history versus Hollywood. Okay, history versus Hollywood. So beginning in the 1930s and 40s and 50s, but primarily the late 40s, 50s, and early 60s, there were a lot of films that were made chronicling the conflicts uh, that occurred in the 1860s and 70s and 80s. Most of them tended to be positive. Most of them tended to be very supportive of the U.S. military or of white settlers. And most of them were all fake. Most of them tended to get Spanish or Italian actors to portray Native Americans. Uh, most of them tended to be morality plays about the Cold War and the relationship between the Americans and the Soviets. Conflict War isn't a movie. Don't think that something that John Wayne told you in 1955 is going to be able to provide hidden meaning for what really happened. Secondly, demobilization. So the U.S. Army, as constructed in 1865, was a nearly million men combat force that was engaged in a brutal conflict that, when it ended, would need to demobilize rapidly. And so beginning in 1865, when they start drawing the army down, there is a great question of how do they reorganize and what are they reorganizing for? Thirdly, Treaties and a reservation system. The second half of the 19th century is a difficult time, and the government begins, the military begins signing a series of treaties in 1865 with a variety of tribal groups uh, to kind of shore up reservation processes and systems. And pretty soon after those treaties are signed and those reservations are developed, white settlers begin breaking. Those treaties, the government steps in to support the settlers, not necessarily the Native Americans who want to stand up for themselves, and utter violence happens. And this is where we start to see the breakdown of the process, the role of white supremacy, the role of othering, uh, and this comes to define much of these efforts. So thirdly, Native American wars. What we're talking about is a conflict of insurgency and counterinsurgency that is fought from the 1860s till about 1890-91. It is a series of conflicts that tends not to involve set-piece battles. It's a series of conflicts where the U.S. military often would lament the fact uh, that Native Americans wouldn't just come out and fight. Now, the U.S. military does emerge successful here uh, by 1890-91, but not without carrying out horrific brutality uh, against Native Americans and their families. Fourthly, perhaps the most famous uh, engagements or individuals uh, uh, during these conflicts would be Chief Sitting Bull, would be General Custer, would be the Battle of Little Bighorn in 1876. Now, there's a few reasons for this. One, mainly because General Custer had been a Civil War hero. Uh, he had been in his early 20s uh, when he was maybe the general in the American Civil War and fought at Gettysburg. And he and his commander, you know, basically wiped out. Uh, the Native American fighters who they were going against uh, were, were good combat soldiers and they knew what they were doing. And uh, Custer was someone who believed the racist assumptions of the white supremacy of the day and uh, did not give them the, the respect that they deserved. The fifth thing for us to, to think about here would be Wounded Knee. So the Wounded Knee Massacre occurs in the early 1890s. Uh, where Americans are going to fire at and kill a number of uh, Native Americans, uh, mainly women and children. 
by the time you get to the end of the 19th century, uh, you have these movements of, of agency, trying to bring a sense of agency amongst a number of Native American tribal groups. Uh, the Ghost Dance Movement would be one of these. Uh, but you have these massacres, these mass attacks uh, that U.S. soldiers and others are carrying out against these indigenous people uh, that really are kind of putting an end uh, to these conflicts and are really a strong statement about the nature of America at the time. Uh, and uh, it is a brutal statement, uh, but it is one that reflects the reality of the lived experience. Thank you.